Oh, perfect. Uh, and Patricia, if I'm in the wrong place, just yell at me if I'm sitting or talking or online. If you can't hear me, just let me know, okay? So everybody uh, grab a hand out. Um, here, here's the point of today. Uh, KW, hey, what are we doing today? Are you Bill's brother? You look just, you guys are, you can tell. Um, so the class today is called, what is a real estate team? Um, and I want to go through this, um, it, and it truly is kind of foundational. Yeah. Then after we go through the foundational piece, I love your feedback on what could be after the future. And then I want to open it up to coaching. Like what questions do you have? What on the team, um, you know, building experience, or if you're thinking about joining a team, whatever it might be, it's open question about anything team. So just to give you a little background knowledge, uh, Jared and I have a team in Tampa. Last year we sold 160 something units for about, I think 70 million. We have built this baby, it kind of is our baby from the ground up. Um, so when we talk through the organizational model, we've lived it, we've messed it up, we've lived it, we've hired, fired, I mean, it's just been all kinds of things. So um, this is, I, I love what Jason said today, like here's everybody's models, pick the parts that work for you. Gary gave us the MREA, which is basically a framework. It doesn't have to be your exact model. It, it's just a really good guidance, you know, kind of a, a combination of many millionaire real estate agents and what they did. Um, so the good true north, it doesn't have to be your exact path, okay? Because we surely have gone off the path and then we've come back to the path and then we've gone off a different way because it's gotta be a business that you enjoy as well, okay? So a couple of things. Um, okay, perfect. Come on. Come on. So again, this is informal. This is for you. Um, I'm going to click through a couple of things. Oops. Okay. So when Gary wrote the MREA, he outlined something called the organizational model. I'm not going to go through all of this, yet I want to give you an idea. The organizational, yeah, if anybody needs Stephanie, um, the organizational model is basically from your first hire until you are the CEO and you have people running the company and you're just advising from beginning to end. Um, here's what I did include, because you guys can look in the MREA, you can read what Gary uh, shared, I think in 1996, 2000, when was the MREA? Yeah, so, it, so we're, it's 20 years, okay? 20 years of living, he's made some updates. Okay, so I would like to walk through those. Um, you, I made some uh, notes on where you can find MREA, the pages of the organizational model, yet I do want to go through the updated org chart, okay? So this is, and feel free to snap pictures because it doesn't exist anywhere. Well, actually, no, you have this. You don't need pictures. Um, Gary gave us, uh, as MAPS coaches, an early release of his MREA2 org chart. So that's what I want to look at with you. This isn't published anywhere. This is just uh, where he last was in his thinking, which with Gary, you know, that is subject to change. Uh, so first level, level one of the org chart is you. You do all, all the things. You lead generate, you go on appointments, you do your own contract, you do your marketing, you do, you do everything, okay? Level two is you plus an idea. Yeah, an admin, okay? Now this admin is your key first hire, okay? Um, oftentimes you get this wrong, okay? And when you get it right is when the world can just absolutely be wildly open to you. And yet until you get this right, you are gonna have some limitations, okay? This person should take away from you everything that isn't, your job description, okay? So they should be preparing your call list. They should be helping you with your marketing. They should be doing your 36 touch, your mailers, your campaigns, um, all of the administrative things that fall outside of those five five job descriptions. Lead generate, lead follow, go to appointments, negotiate contracts and practice and role play. Think about it. Nobody else can do that for you, right? 
Okay. Now the next level is, so this person, if you want to write this down, this is possibly the future CEO of your company, that admin. <laughs> yeah, that admin, the future CEO of your company. So if you think, oh, they seem a little flippant. Oh, they'll do for now. Oh, they're good for a little bit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Because then you will be looking for somebody to hire and bring in that would be their boss. No, you want them to own it from the ground up. Okay. And if you want to know that one of the biggest mistakes that we've done, it's that one right there. We like hired all these different individual people instead of get one person so trained and that they own the operations of your company and then allow them to grow it. Allow them to hire the people that work for them. Jared and I got this really wrong. We hired all the people. Ooh, you're the TC. Ooh, you're the DO. Ooh, you're the marketing person. Ooh, you're this. So guess whose job it was? To hold them accountable, to think of it, to no, you don't want that because nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do the job of the real estate agent. Okay. Normal thing. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody new. Total wrong, wrong seat. Second time, put my daughter in that position. Total wrong seat on the bus for her, right? That's probably the boss, though, right? That's not her seat on the bus. She's not yeah. an it's just, we're we're not there any good. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, no, it was a funny revelation one year later, but you know, we both laughed and on what we went. But, we're going to give you and anytime you hire out of motion, fail. Yes, we have done it as well. Okay. So then notice the connectors. So you have lead admin. Okay. So think Mackenzie or Stacy or these, these are that, that person that kind of owns the whole thing. Okay. Then they are hiring out their transaction coordinator. So basically they're running the company, they're thinking marketing, they're thinking all things operation side, and yet maybe they leverage out the tra actual transaction coordination, okay? Here's where you can get creative. Could that be a virtual assistant? Sure. Oops. So I okay. know too, for me, this is not a but my brain is like, I leverage out of TC quick before editing because I just knew that I knew it was this stuff I yep. was doing. So it's not necessarily editing, it was just TC. Well, and you look at the volume that you're doing for you to go from one to three, it's good because you everything is green light, red light, red light, green light. Can I afford to hire this person? The biggest mistake is you hire somebody before you earn the right to them. Okay. Jason is starting to do two, three, four, five, six closings a month. He can jump to step three. He plugged a little gap he needed with a TC. And then he realized, whoa, I need way more than TC. I need like life support, business support, okay? So they're hiring their transaction coordinator. Here's what I want you to do is make a note. It doesn't have to be TC that they outsource. It's whatever they don't like. So I would draw that level three where it says TC or whatever they don't like. Remember, you are holding lead admin accountable and you want somebody that can think enough to run your entire company. So if they hate marketing and they love the transaction, then let them leverage out that side of it. And they keep TC. Like there's no hard and fast rule, okay? Um, so that's level three, lead admin, transaction coordinator. Think about this. You have two salaries that you're responsible for, okay? Um, so how many closings do you think you need to have to be moving to this level? Yeah, that's true. Well, but TC, can it be a company, a TC company? Yeah, it could be totally outsourced. Absolutely. When Gary wrote this, he's probably thinking more on salary in in house. You go and jump and do it. Your admins should be spending more time on marketing, less time on transaction. Like, of course, you should you ever wonder if you want to take that off real quick? Well, we did have, mm -hmm. we had an external transaction coordinator as well outside. Um, but we kind of took that back, and that was for two two reasons. And the biggest reason was there was some 
post-acting that weren't working for us and our clients weren't going to take care of the way we want to work yeah. the customer experience was bad, so basically we asked the head if she wants to go back. She was frustrated with it. I would agree with what Eric said because it was just a little more interesting. So we're like, where I want to throw that all on her, but she's like, it's like, so that is for natural. It's really like what she, what she loves to do, we will give her more of that and I'll switch it up. Yeah. Okay. The way I'm doing it, so I had a concession for it way before an admin. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them since, as I said, four years. The reason why I don't get banning, they get a concession coordination on top of it, she ends up leaving. Now that means that I, I have to take back the concession. I haven't done it for such a long time. Of course, I can do it, but that I'm so used to not having it. So all my time is placed on another thing other than that. So that for me would be a huge step back. And, uh, Although Danny does get a lot of with all the concessions that we do for the lots, which we don't have a concession coordinator, and he's really good at staying on top of everything else. So, yeah, so I have I, many places with the concession coordinator, and yeah, so they, they work great together. And on Friday, they, they speak for 30 minutes. Danny and Suzanne, they talk about all the concessions. So they spend 30 minutes on Friday, and they over everything, so we don't miss it out. Yeah, you know what? What I like what you just said. You know, if if you was with somebody for four years and it works, why why you know approach the garbage something that works clearly? If you trust the transaction coordinator, she knows the way you know you like doing the thing. You know, now take it away from her. Today, and, and here's another thing. Uh, well, Suzanne works for anyone, right? She's a freelance, and so I pay four hundred for transaction. And I do charge a transaction fee, my client, 299, which is pretty, pretty good. So that all said, my payment is right. So, so when you, you guys are kind of going where you should start heading, when you're doing three, four, five, six transactions a month, you start calculating that 400 times however many. Wait a second. I can have, uh, if a good transaction coordinator can handle 30 plus closings a month. If this is their head down, this is what they are doing. When you start doing the math, you think, you know what, wait, I could bring this person in-house. They could do my transaction coordination and X, Y, or Z, okay? Um, so it's that I pulled out the calculator because it's 400 times how many closing. Wait, could I afford this in-house? Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so no, no. So doing the red light, green light, am I putting more money out than if I hired somebody to do it? That makes sense because you don't want to output, 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 because like Nico just said, this person is working for him and all of these other people. Okay. Um, all right. So level four, part one, um, I want you to write this down for me. In my opinion, this should be like the new seventh level. This is the level four, part one. This is the most profitable place to be as a calorie leader. Like this, I forget all these uh, MREA this and this, this, this. You could be MREA, millionaire real estate agent at level four, part one. Okay, here's what level four, part one is you are still the main agent. Okay, you still set every listing appointment and you still set every buyer appointment. Yet they are either at the seller's property or the buyer's appointment is in the office. You're doing a buyer's consultation. Okay, then you are done you have leveraged out showing property because you have a showing assistant okay so think about how much time you would have in your life if you never showed another property again and you had a showing specialist what is the inside yes yes so now you have somebody who you have leveraged to help you with uh two and three lead generation and lead follow-up so they're not 100% replacing that for you, okay? Um, I'll tell you, Jared and I on our team, the DTD2, our ISA, OSA, they can call a lot of haven't mets and different people, yet I'm not having an ISA who's been on the team for six months call my mom and wish her a happy birthday or call the person that closed with us last month that Brooke had a great relationship with. It just feels disingenuous. Yeah. Like you're so busy, you cannot call me 
that ISA OSA is to generate more business. Hey, Amber and Jared, just want to make sure you saw the invitation to a client event. They're doing more like the outside touches, even with other clients. Okay. So you are at this point the main real estate agent. Okay. Your showing assistant is obviously licensed. Then you have an outside sales agent, inside sales agent. They are one and the same. Can I challenge a little bit? Yeah. So it's very it's challenging. Yeah. yeah. So we, we would I mean, encourage that to be specifically in a certain system. And I went that route. And then in one of the books you recommended, talk about whole section on it and that kind of email. You know, yeah. Whole section. So what I came across, which is what I articulated, is that the showing assistant ends up being whole section on it where they don't, and the buyer's agent could own that entire process from start to finish yeah. and take that off of my plate. And we're talking about leveraging. I found that for not that much more, if somebody who has ownership and just wants to get that transaction from showing to closing, they own it. And then lot the of customers also feel a little bit of disconnect when they're going, well, I'm not with you. Now this guy's showing it, but if I want to make an offer, I go back to you. I just found it just seems more in practice. In theory, in a sense, yep. in practice, it seems way more capable and way more beneficial if the buyer's agent just gets to see that all the way through with that customer. Yeah, so that's a great point. I also that was my mindset, but then I'm, I'm doing more what you've been recommending for all this time, which is this model. The one on the left. This is how I see it now. So, yes, if you have a really good showing system, and also how your compensation will go. So, for instance, if you have somebody that is talented and all they want to do is show how, that's it. And they may be able to show how for different nations. So, it's like, you know, you do a compensation per door, and it, it, it all depends. It, they are you end up selling something that they show, then you can do a 10 to 10 percent referral fee. Now they decide to okay, I tell you what, I'm gonna do the, the um, I'm gonna do the contract and I'm gonna work an inspection. Okay, now we're looking at a little bit more money for them. So it will be up to them, and you will not bound to that person. So for instance, if you have a high business the way I say if you have a high, somebody that is fully your client and they want to work with you only. Then you have the ability to do it. We're just having a buyer statement that by contract probably you don't have to give, right? And the other cool thing about that is that um, also it's leverage in the sense that you said to the client, hey, this is my showing assistant. We'll have that, you know, um, Jordan, my showing assistant. Yeah, it's for that one off makes sense, but then it's like the, when you're trying to teach culture and training and you develop your agents, having that person in your own house yeah. makes way more sense. Well, than just open the door for this customer, and then when they ask questions, yeah. I can't ask questions. Ask Jason. Well, that, 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 that being said, let's say that this person ends up to be talent, and yeah. you get them alone, and, right. and now this person says, "Hey, I, I think I'm work, we're going to work great together." Yeah. Too. Now, you, now they're coming on board as a buyer's agent. After you went through that, after you were dating, but well, would you still agree that you'd stay in one? Because two days, what would you? So it depends on where you want to go. Some people don't want, um, because eventually, so you're going to hold on to listings as you grow, and then that person is going to run the buyer side of the house. Some people want to stop here and have ownership of all customers, like at the closing table, you are my people. So it depends on your motivation. Um, for Jared and I, though, we fell into, I would love to say we're geniuses. We are not. We fell into the showing special. Oh, yeah. If it makes sense, you find the right person. Yes. So it was our uh, son's preschool teacher. And Miss Cindy was her name. She was with us for like two and a half years. And she, every time I would drop me in and off or pick him up, she'd say, hey, I really love HGTV. And so then your next thought is, you have no idea. And then it, she's like, I, I don't want to do all that. You're always on the phone and this and this. She said, I don't want that. I just love houses. I love to show houses. And I said, Cindy, I love you. I want you to be here teaching my son. So if the uniform showing agent showed up, yep. maybe, but otherwise, it's very hard to try to get the reality of finding Well, no, I, oh, I, 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 I disagree. No, I, disagree. I think, you know, any person, yeah. right admin, right transaction coordinator, right buying specialist, it, it's hard to find. Because it's, we yep. now in this generation to begin with where, where nobody wants to work. You know, not just real estate, right? So it is. But I think, you know, looking business, yeah. you know, and we're not looking at now, you know, uh, per transaction something, but looking, you know, train, you have three years to train somebody, maybe. 
you know, what do you actually want to be that, you know, you know, 2 million DPI, you know, agent. So finding the right person, I think, has to be done at, at, at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's not my mo model that I, I only have one person, but I do, I do leverage it as needed all, all the time. And now what is important, like, you know, um, I don't know if you who who've been here, and I know you're good friends with uh, Catherine, Catherine Rain. Rain. I was yeah. just gonna say something about her. You know, she trained, you know, a buyer's agent. And the way she goes, she goes, you know, she meets her at the office, you know, has a buyer consultation and everything. Which, you know what? I'm very good. I'm very good at what I do. I'm very good negotiating contracts with you, you know, and everything. I'm your go-to. Call me, text me. But she's I'm very I suck at showing houses, but I have somebody who does that yeah. for me, you know. So how does the agent now look at this realtor who has staff for certain things as a very highly professional, knowing what you do in the market, professional? Is this not reality for most people building activity? What are out and how many your application if you're having those conversations? It seems like when you know what I'm saying, it's exactly what well, you're doing. Yes, I know because you can catch up on those, you know, in your office. Yeah. There is a number one agent in Chicago. He is not with Keller Williams. I don't know if he's number one, but one of the top agents. You know what he does? He goes to the different, you know, presentation. He sits down and he says, "Okay, I'm, you, I, I mean, these are the services and everything. I'm number one in Chicago area for listing. This is my GCI." He says, "You know what? Do not call me. I will contact you every Thursday. I'm probably doing all, all the, you know, <laughs> sellers and everything." He says, "I may if it's an emergency give you a call back or not. You know why? Because I'm busy selling your home. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm too busy trying to sell your home for the top dollar." And he gets every single listing because you know what he comes across is he knows how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, just my thought on this the topic. So two things that I, I look at a lot of KPAs for any role that we're hiring, just in general. And you know, I'm not surprised when I see Shoney and I show up higher than even single agent and RA and so forth for a job. And then the second thing is that you know it's a big thing here too, and a lot of the people in the room are this way. Sometimes it's hard for us to think like, oh, well, somebody would do that. Somebody would want to do that. So sometimes we have to remember that there are people that know and want to show home, but it's supposed to pay. They need like love. that alone. So we just got to remember that people that just, they love what we don't do. Yeah. And, and you know what? And they do perfection. Right. You right. cannot let it go. I want, like, I want to go to the buyer agency. It's not all people have been sort of no, you're right. So the, the, our proper personality is we never see ourselves doing it, right? But that doesn't mean that there are people with that kind of personality that that's all they want to do. My second thing, and I now that I know Jacob more, I you know, really respect Jacob and um because before you did like, <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just saying when changing is a little a bit lower, but we overthink things. So you see it. And we, we complicate those things that it shouldn't be very simple. So now I'm trying to kind of identify the constant way. What you think about um, overthinking? So, a couple things about showing specialists, okay? So, you hit the nail on the head and be like, um, Cindy was at the buyer consultation, and Jared would say, You guys know us from church or soccer or this place or that place. On the weekend, we might be on a ball field or here or there. And if a new property hits the market, we are not okay to be too busy to show it to you. So we literally have hired a personal shopper that's gonna show you, give access to you. So we have multiplied ourselves to serve you at a higher level. Now you guys know we are the bulldogs. When it comes time to negotiating, I mean, we are gonna take that seller to tap, okay? Um, Cindy is gonna show you the properties. Cindy, what she had total ownership. She would text Jared, um, who are we not working with right now? Who do I need to follow up with? Who are we waiting on a this or that? I mean, she wanted to get them in the property because she didn't get, we didn't do her door. We only did the percent of, of GCI. I think they both work, okay? So she was really obsessed with um, getting them to closing. And we did the same thing. It was 10 or 15% for showing. If she found the property and showed it, I think it was 15 then if um, she attended inspections and walkthroughs, um, just to be there, we would come by and kind of do the mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah, she would actually sit there for three hours or four hours or let the seawall guy in to look at it. I mean, she was kind of a runner also. Um, then she could get 20%. And then we always like to attend closing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So, I love that. They're already there. 
And you just stop and buy just to say hello. Yep. Right. You got it. And you we said you are paid at the end anyway. Right. I would go like this. Yeah. Off the car? Yeah. Passing by? They're <laughs> getting in the house when they want to get in the house. The house they want to see. Or show them. That is true. Yeah. It's one of the you know that you are available for negotiation to make a deal happen. Yeah. No, for me, like I'm, I'm thinking sometimes if I'm a buyer, what do I care about? If I'm a buyer, I want to see the house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, level four, part one, you can make a ton of money. You can perfect your leadership. You can refine your system. It's like life is good here. You are going on appointments. Can you talk about the uh, ISA for a little bit? Yeah. Any specific area? Yeah, like how much would it be? Right? Is, is it from virtual? Is, is, oh, wow. it's in the office? Or, and how much would it be for both of them? Either it's virtual? Yep. And how much would you expect to pay if they're in virtual? Good question. We've run a ton of plays on this, okay? You can hire somebody like Conversion Monster, and you basically have in your database 5,000 names that you've collected over the years that you've paid. Conversion Monster can, for I think $5 a lead, um, drip on them and love on them. Okay. We have hired an in house, um, which I believe this is Gary's thinking around this is in house, an in house OSA, ISA. The places we have hired and had the best success is someone coming from a call center background. There are companies like this education um, where they have to call and re enroll students. They're used to seeing a clock on the wall and they literally have to, five minutes, go to the bathroom. Five minutes, they're back in their seat. Like, I would die, I think, if I had to live in that much structure with the headset on, sitting, typing notes. And yet, people who've already lived through that for us um, have just been more successful. So, this is a person that can call the for sale by owner. They can call the expires for you. Um, they can um, follow up on your leads if you've already called them once. Jerry and I used to stand in a bullpen side by side. We get the same for sale by owner list. I would call them and not set an appointment. And he would call them like 10 minutes later and be like, what? They have no idea you're calling from the same company. It's like they, they don't know that stuff. They're busy. Their phone is ringing. So this is another arm for you. Someone who is calling their main job. And I would write this down. This is, they're going to be in charge of lead tracking, lead flow, lead conversion. Like you want this person to own everything about the lead. And circle prospecting. Circle prospecting is huge. We did not do a ton of that because the uh, conversion ratio on circle prospecting is one of the lowest. Right. So we just did not do it. And it's phenomenal. Okay. That's what you so hired. Yeah. I'll share mine. Mine is virtual. Yep. Cyber Records does it? Well, I, I have just a personal, yep. you know, my own, I, I train. And and honestly, you know, expires and for sale by owners, I'm having very little success. Circle prospecting, amazing. Amazing. And as somebody, that's you know. I'm paying $5 an hour. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much do you pay? Five dollars an hour. This person that so it cost me like forty dollars a week. Oh wow! You know? And 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 every day I get the, you know, I mean then I am responsible to take it over and go and get that listing, yeah. you know, and get that appointment. However, it's a you know John Smith this street would consider selling the home, you know, kind of the thing. And then I follow up with John Smith. This person is not giving you the, the appointment. You just give me your warm lead. Kind of no, appointment too depends. Yeah. Well, you know, with appointment too, it, it's difficult. You know, they, he has my schedule. However, I still want to be the one that, you know, talk to the seller, pre screen, you know, do that. I don't want to just go to appointment without having the conversation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a waste of my time if I just, you know, go to anybody's yeah. house without pre listing. You know, um, so this person is going to also get paid typically percent of the transaction. Okay, so for us, they they get a base salary plus a percent of the transaction. So they're, they're licensed. Okay. I mean, for ours in house, we've always used in house, and so they're licensed. Okay. I would say inside self agent, 
O as a outside. Yeah. What does it do? So O as a is calling for sale by owner to expire unmet, haven't met. And your inside sales agent is answering inbound calls from your uh, database or from, from mailers, from anything. They're, be, they're able to take inbound calls, okay? They're able to work with your own people who know you. It's a different skill set. Yeah, it's a different skill set. Yet, um, so for us, the in, so I'm talking to the traditional meaning behind this. Again, it can go in any direction you want it. For us, in-house, we would pay them anywhere from $2,000 to $3,600 a month as a base salary, okay, like base pay. Then they would get on the buyer side if they set an appointment and pre-qualified it, okay? Um, the pre-qualification skill is probably the hardest for them to master. I mean, it's just something we've had an opportunity on. 5% on the buyer transaction and 10% on the seller transaction. 5% on the buy side, 10% on the seller side. $3,000 base. With a $3,000 rate, this person can easily make $100,000. Easily. Okay. If you move to this with this virtual assistant, how do you trust that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, no, uh, there's a great company called Cyberbacker um, that you can use. There's another company called My Out Desk that you can use. Um, you can use. How much do they How much do they cost? Uh, Cyberbackers, um, I think their ISAs are like fifteen hundred a month. I can't vouch. I can only vouch to kind of what we put on. Okay. All right, level four, part two, which is probably where we will pause on this. Okay, just given where everybody is and their current trajectory or where they're at right now. So you are still the main real estate agent. Now look over here, level four, part two, which you also have in your packet. What has changed? Again, bigger. What has changed theoretically? Big idea. That your lead, lead admin, now your lead admin is responsible for, for your listing manager. Yeah. And for the transaction coordinator. It's not the buyers. Yeah. So on the let's talk admin side. Okay. Admin is now divided up between TC and listing manager. Okay. So it's all things listing, marketing, all that good stuff. Then everything under contract and beyond. Some people do uh, when they divide that out. Um, one person handles all the buyer side transactions. One handles all the listing side. It, there's no right or wrong. Okay. Um, then you have now leveraged off um, the actual buyer side of the transaction completely in this model. So you have a lead buyer agent, which likely, if, if they were the person that wanted more opportunity, grew into being a lead buyer agent. Uh, my friend Kate Conroy, she works for uh, another friend, Tony Brony. She's a lead buyer agent. She will close between 150 to 200 deals a year. It is her and two showing agents. Okay, her and two showing. She literally just goes uh, on the appointment. They show all the properties, and then she hops in and she the hold off. Okay, now you are still doing what? Write it down. Legion. Legion and managing. Listing. Right. You are the listing person. You're going to hold that listing thing for a while. There you go. Yeah. Can I just share two nuggets from one of the classes that went to my account? When you leverage, when you leverage with the right people, you can accomplish more. And secondly, your work ethic is killing your opportunity based on what you accomplish uh, that day versus what someone gets done. Mm -hmm. so when we're talking about OSA, I just say you have to think about that. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, so now your um your ISA OSA is now the ultimate lead manager because back here, remember I said they had to manage the lead traffic, lead flow, all of that. Well, now they are holding all the things lead. Because remember, they're funneling leads to you on the listing side, to this person on the buyer side. Um, they're also working on how do we get more leads? How much are we paying on PPC? How are we getting the ROI? Um, it, is our listing being marketed property like properly? How many leads are we getting? This person is literally a lead machine. They are running. How do we get this funnel flowing into the, the, the business? Okay. Because nothing matters. What, what's the triangle? 
Please can leverage um something of lead. Lead is actually lead first, then listing, then leverage. Um, okay, so that is really uh, and then they have somebody helping them call. Is this person still making phone calls? Yeah. Yes, they absolutely are. They have the bandwidth and the ability at this phase in the in the um growth to still be on the phones as well. So now you have two people making calls plus you making calls. Likely, you're probably making less calls at this point because they are setting so many listing appointments that you're just playing appointment to appointment. This person who made buyer agent, same thing. They're literally meeting with buyers at the office and lead generating likely less. Now, as the rainmaker, why is that important that you've created that? So you do more listings. Yeah, so you have more listings. Why else? Find leverage. Yes, listings are leveraged 100%. Why else? I'm managing. Yeah, my friend Kate, she could probably go out and do it on her own. I mean, guys, she's going to close 200 houses with these two showing specialists. Yeah, if she went out on her own, she wouldn't have this. She wouldn't have this built, built already for her. It is literally just go on appointment, go on appointment, go on appointment, go on pre qualified appointment. Like, there's a system in place so that that person is doing what they do best. Okay. All right. So that's level four, part two. Yes. Good question. So, listing manager, what, what that looks like? We all have a listing manager. What do they do? Like, Good. What is the main thing? So, they do the pre listing checklist, which is, um, like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm driving somewhere. Somebody calls me, hey, can you come list my house? Absolutely. I pull over the car pull out my little sheet of paper, my pre-qualification checklist, I go through it all. I come back to the office, scan it or give it to this person. Then they do everything else. Schedule the photographers, the showing, they put them into commands, they put them into um, DocuSign, they're getting all the document prep ready. They might be able to do a quick CMA for me to at least have an idea. They're doing everything administrative on the listing side that you can think of. And all other, meanwhile, what is my lead admin? So your lead admin is your basically future um, operations manager. So they are thinking about um, the, the whole entire operation. Okay, how, how are we functioning? Okay, good questions. All right, I just don't want to run out of time. So I want to flip to uh, level five, part one and part two. I'd like to have this class monthly or every other month. So we can go uh, to a deeper level on these. Um, just not today. Look at this seventh level. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Um, can I just say something about the seventh level? The book is written on it. That is the end. I'll be all for some people. And yet I want us to all have the freedom. That does not have to be your end. I'll be all. You can have an amazing career and amazing life at level four, part one, level four, part two. You can have an amazing business and it does not have to be level seven, okay? Because I'll tell you, Jared and I will probably never end up at level seven. Like that's not our ultimate goal. It's just not. That's Gary. Yep, that's Gary. There you go, okay? All right, so let's talk through a little bit of this at a higher level. Um, a team is a group of people who work together. A team is two or more people um, that are coming together to achieve a common goal. A team is a group of real estate professionals that each specialize, circle the word specialize, in one area of the real estate business and work together to serve a client from start to finish through a transaction, okay? Um, Gary's models are built on the specialist model. Uh, Jared and I support that. Some people, as they grow, they have um, agent partners that do buyers and sellers at the same time. Uh, we have always kept with the specialist model. Okay, I was the only listing person. Now he's really the only listing person uh, with our uh, an agent Brooke who's earned the right. Okay, how? So that's the team generally in definition. Yet how do you get there? Okay, because from single agent to team owner, is it a big leap? Yeah. If I can just uh, run a backtrack yeah. a little bit, I forgot to ask this. So you have a buyer agent, right? And then you're doing the listings. Is your buyer agent doing any listings at all? Or no, no. You give to the listings and then you give him a, a referral for that listing. Got it. Yeah, so we, 
So we typically, we are buyer's agents and they bring us, it's funny, we've changed this a couple of times. Here's where we are now. So in the first four or five years of the business, I was a little bit of a punk, a little bit of a rebel. And I'm like, what do you mean? I give you all the buyers. I don't charge you a referral fee. Here's what I realized. No, 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 no. I want to incentivize them to think listings everywhere they go, even though it's not their jam. So when an agent on our team, so let's say Dondra gives us a listing from her sphere of influence or whomever, it's a 25% referral fee. Yeah, that's what we do. I didn't always do that. And it was a mistake. I think it's very important to do that. Yeah. They bring you the, the mom or anything. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. think about it. If you don't let them serve them, then there has to be some win. Because if not, they could I, refer to somebody else, which no, yes, no, fundamentally. Yet, yeah. even if I have a $2 million buyer, I'm going to give it to a buyer's agent on our team. I'm not going to work it. Right. So like they know... I'm not cherry picking this or that. They're going to get all the buyers. We're going to get the listings. And, and now I would say anyone will do a, a referral fee for the board. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if you give them $2 million buyer, mm -hmm. what's your split then? So great question. We haven't even, nobody brought up splits yet. I'm so impressed with you guys. You're just all about no, you the just vision. mentioned the, the listing split. So now. I'm yeah. So it. on our real estate team. Okay. And we're going to talk about the uh, compensation models to make all of this work. This is our team. And uh, this is Gary's recommendation on the buyer side. It's 50, 50. Okay. And on the seller side. So my husband gets paid as a listing partner, not as the owner. He doesn't get all the money. He gets paid 30%. So a listing agent gets 30% and a buyer's agent gets 50%. Well, if you're the listing agent, then you the listing for your money. You're not splitting that with anybody. Um, well, as we we don't want to be the only ones always. So we have since day one, he gets paid 30% so that as he is growing into different opportunities and he replaces himself our profit and loss statement is not going to have some dramatic change. Oh. Yeah. The model that Gary says is pay a listing partner a salary of about sixty to $75,000, a listing partner, and then they get 10% of the transaction or somewhere around there. That way they can do 10, 15 listings a month. And think about it. All they're doing is going on a listing appointment. They're, they don't have to do any of the admin. They don't have to do the lead generation. They literally are listing person. At the buyer side, you're doing 50, 50 now. You're not doing a different number of pay getting lead and you wouldn't pay. No, we don't do that. Never? Yeah, we did. It just becomes a tracking nightmare. Right. And then I end up Justified. two months later. Oh, no, that was my cousin. Oh, geez. Now I'm writing personal checks. My accountant wants to kill me. It just did not, didn't work out well. And here's the reality. Here's why. We don't have to do that very much because we have worked very hard to build um, a lead flow system. So if you look at an agent on our team, if they have 30 closings for the year, um, 25 to 27 are from us and three to five are from them. So they're not going to say, can I get 10% more on these few when we gave them the life we're zoning, like the business we're zoning. But, but maybe if you give them 30, 10 per score, and I don't know, maybe yeah. it's not, maybe it's going to be a, a higher incentive for right. them right. to go and find your listing. Right, that's why it's so much. Well, we give them 25%. No, I understand that. But that's yeah. why it's so much. And well, that's just, that's the model we're creating, though. We don't want agents that are going out there and lead generating and creating their own business. We we do, yet we don't because we want them with us. So Donder's been with us three plus years. You got it. You got it. Because what happened is, especially when people are talent, and I, I don't I don't know how to put it in a nice way, yeah. but we all think owners, like, we want talented people that are always, that they can do great on their independent model, meaning they need you, although they do great, it's a who for who, but you don't have your agents sitting involved and doing that kind of work and doing these activities because you want them to be doing services. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, they do. They go to gold because the mindset piece is life changing. You know, they're they are building themselves to be a bigger and a better person. My friend Brittany, she's a good example of this. Um, she worked for Lance Logan's team. Some months she would sign between thirty and forty listings a month. She's like Amber. That is all I did. I literally lived out of my car and I drove from seller's house to seller's house to seller's house. She said we got so busy. I don't know. I was so good sitting in front of them that literally I had an iPad and it was called like the seller commitment form. And she would say, oh, good. If you want to hire me, awesome. Then you'll just click on the iPad, do whatever. Then the team, she would leave. So she had it down to 30, 45 minutes. She would leave. The team would then send them all the paperwork, do all the stuff. That is the specialized model that Gary pushes. It doesn't have to be the model you want or, or do. We just have always wanted our agents to be self-reliant or to be reliant on us. Yes. You got it. I don't want them to, I want them to enjoy doing what they're doing because our buyers agents, they do not want to call for sale by owners. They don't want to prospect. They don't want to do those things. Yet they have been with us for so long when we are doing um, title opportunities, team leader, different companies that we're involved in. Yes, you want your people to have those opportunities. We've helped all of them buy rental properties, invest in things. Um, you got it. So we do a lot with Google. Um, we do a ton with events, client events. Yeah, we do. We pay Google is mostly it. We um, leverage Brivity um, and then... Uh, Google PPC, and then you use Brivity as your man. Yeah. In nope. In re in replacement up. So we were with Command for probably three years, um, and then as the team and the lead flow increased, um, we ended up coming. Brivity also gives you leads, right? Yep. Yeah. No, it's and hey, it's it's yeah, it's yeah, true. It's for you. Yeah. So now, can I ask you about a, a question because I have different thoughts as you yeah. as you talk. It's interesting for me. So my ultimate goal, right? Like, I mean, five, 10, you know, year goal is passive income. Yeah. It really is. You know, I just want to spend half of the year in Europe. You know, I think I deserve it. So I think your partner is really like living her best life right now. I'm taking, it, taking exactly. That's a different topic. She, <laughs> that's a different topic. She rubs it in with all of her pictures, but she, she'll be back in a week or so. See, that's another one. For me, for me personally, it was a, kind of difficult to get a partner mm -hmm. because I was on my own. I was, you know, selling on my own. And also I had a team that I was mentoring and a lot of money I was getting from mentoring yeah. back in the day. So for me to add a partner at 50-50, mm -hmm. you know, who was not a producing agent on her own, you know, at that time was, you know, difficult. However, it's so funny that, you know, I added a partner at 50-50 and we made more individually you know, than what I did when I was just by myself. Why? Because, you know, if she is working and lead generating and going to the appointments and I'm, you know, there at a nail salon or something, you would feel that. So it g gave me extra yeah. accountability to really go and push. If she got a path to listing and I'm dragging, you know, then I'm going to go and get, it up. you know, four listings now because mm -hmm. I just, you know, when, so for us, it works very well, you yep. know, with, with our our different you know model but but you know with the way you say that you know they depend on you guys as, as a resource and everything does it give you enough of leverage as team owners what do you mean so okay you know so basically you know if you have to run your team mm -hmm. if they depend on your leads mm -hmm. if, if you if they if dependent on you as your model mm -hmm. Can you take off for half of a year traveling oh, to Thailand? See. Yes, because there's people that own it. Yeah, because right. there's people that own the different roles. So like the lead flow is run through one person. So they are the ones making sure that we're getting the ROI, the drip, all that stuff. That's not Jared and I anymore. For a long time though, yeah, it was us. So um so if you took off half of your year in Thailand right now, your system I'm not doing that right now. Okay, but but if but let's say, okay, you know, the model, not not other, you know, your team yeah. model. You know, for me, it's important to get that answer, you know? Yeah. If you want to because you do all the things, 
Right now, you could take off. I could. Would, and, running by yeah. and your team would be successful and everything would be uh, fine, right? Yeah, so, sure. Well, so here's what we're in the middle of right now. So for a long time, the answer would have been to the no, okay? Because I was the one that had to carry all the way to the listing. Then I transferred that burden to my husband. Now he has transferred that burden to an agent, Brooke, on our team, who's also going to be the director of sales. So she's like the lead manager, okay? Um, until we transfer that. So Jared did, I think, 70 to 80 closings last year by himself. So he was not going anywhere last year. However, he started to realize, babe, this is not the life worth living. I don't want to do this. This is not fun. So the next thing was, okay, well, who can help us? So if we, as we're building Brooke in to take more, she's also interviewing to find that full-time listing partner because she doesn't want to be that person. She doesn't want to be my friend, Brittany, that drives from appointment to appointment. Yet the way that we build the team, um, if you think about it, give you a better example. Um, there are people who own it. So lead gen, there's a person, director of operations, there's a person and director of sales, there's a person. Even if I went to Europe, um, I'm still going to check in with those people once a week, 30 minutes. How's it going? Because there's something that I think people tell a big fat lie around and that even when you're a CEO, they're like, oh, be the CEO. You're not involved. Full crap. No, no, you no. You are. No, you have to check in for sure. Yeah. Right. So, so for me, I've gotten myself out of the listings. Jared's starting to work himself out of the listing. Because he can have strategic meetings. I love to teach and train and coach. Like we can't do that when we're in appointments. So, and, and you know why I ask you that question? And sorry if I'm... No, no, it's you're not interesting for you. You can stop me. But it is, for me, you know, it's very important. Okay. Uh, well, forget me, Uchai. She, is, she can be in Italy all she wants. Uh, no, but, but, you know, for me, like, if I have two scenarios right one let's say you know i'll go back to split and I, I don't like the, the topic of split yeah. because for me it's irrelevant it's what you take home not what you split but, but let's say you know if i have a larger team you know slightly larger team and then i slowly get you know keep their three, 30 percent mm -hmm. they can make 70 percent right they on their own they want to go and get their business I'm still passively getting 30%. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, you're down here because your team, the Kane team does all this. But I'm not talking about Kane. I'm talking about the more. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm just talking, you know, myself yeah. here. You know, let's say yeah. I hire, you know, not hire, but, you know, expand my own team, you know, buyers, agents and everything, you know, and versus, you know, doing 50-50 or paying them 25% for their listing. Yeah. I'm doing solely doing the opposite. The one, you know, they lead gen together with us, you know, like two hours every morning, but three hours every morning, go to the bowl. I maybe pay for it, right? Okay. And at the end result, you know, I'm the one keeping 40 or 30%, mm -hmm. but they are lead generating and doing the business. Yeah. It depends Would on it your be model. I think they can both work here. Jared and, and my long-term goal is that we eventually have a company that has a valuation that could be sold to someone. Mm -hmm. So the more that we stretch our leadership, the more we create a system that creates leads, lead flow, the more that we have an operations team, the more that we have this and we own it, it's, it's more of a saleable business that you can wrap up in a bow. Mm -hmm. The way the lawnmower guy does it, both the appointment, he didn't close the next one. You're looking at it and like, I don't want to take from my guys do it all. Yeah. People write it on way, but it's almost like they just send out the people and you're trying to help people grow and build and do their own yeah. thing. Well, so, for me, again, for me, like, you know, end result is passive income. You know, I, I purchased three rental, you know, three in the past one year, three properties, right? Mm -hmm. I'm renting them out. It's passive income, you know, from my team that I mentored, I get passive income. You know, so I'm thinking, you know, if I can net. Ten thousand dollars every month and not be here. It's purely done. Purely passive income. Yeah. I mean, my property. I have a property manager, even though I'm in real estate, mm -hmm. because I want them to do it. I don't want to have a part of it. Yeah. So you know, with the team, you know, I'm thinking like long term. You know, five years from now, if I can have you know five agents, maybe ten agents, mm -hmm. you know, and collect twenty five percent or thirty percent just because I'm giving them system. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it could work. Yeah. And you know, I'm just. Yeah. Thinking all, of, if all of it can 
A hundred percent. We need to eventually grow that that level. They're going to be might be you know, so there's a different yeah. way. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think is really neat, if you lean in kind of on that specialist model and you make the people somewhat self-reliant on you or reliant on you, um, the way that we're creating opportunities for our teammates is a little bit different. So Brooke right now, I'm pushing her. What system can you can or box up that, you know, you can sell to other real estate agents that you can share with people? You know, what max coaching course can you write? I'll help you write it, bro. Like, I don't want to need the money. I, I want you to have a platform. So it's, it's the real estate company and our baby. We are not getting rid of it. It's not going anywhere. It's kind of the cornerstone of everything. Yet from that real estate company, we can have people doing all of these great things around it that are their babies that they can take and run with. Okay. So, all right. Um, Time is done. One fifteen. Great. So we have two minutes. We've got like twelve slides. It's no, we'll be good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, how how a team career visioning. I can't tell you this enough. Uh, Sunday afternoon, I spent four hours in career visioning with candidates. Okay. Um, on Labor Day weekend, like you cannot skip career visioning. Um, I'm very visual, and I have to attend. All I think doesn't really work. You know? Yeah. When will be the next time that we have some like, in person to revisioning within the area? That's a great um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm present and because today I spend the two days, I don't care about, you know, that'd be again, we just give it. Yeah, but it was online. Yeah, I'd rather have the other one. So they that one. Yeah, but with Mark Bullish. Um, so, I just put it on my list. Well, CV was one, and then 30, 60, 90 success through others was the other one. Um, I'm going to put that on. Um, career visioning, uh, I can teach it if, if we can't get somebody better, for sure. Yeah, that's something we haven't had on the local level for a long time. For a long time. Right. Love it. Do you think we can fill a room? Yeah. If we do it right, we could. Okay. You I mean, know, and, and by doing right, you know, there were a couple of speakers here that I think that called from Dana. We get a lot of people from the uh, from the uh, cave from Zoom. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I can I can pitch. No problem. I'm good at um career visioning is literally the course that KW gives you on how to hire. And it's it is a 40 page packet that you print out. And um I had my husband do a motivational interview and I was watching him. I mean, it literally he he's done hundreds of them. He still has the questions here, he still asks the questions. So what would that do for you? ultimately what does that look like what what does that mean for you he literally follows the yeah. script it's already done for you okay so no i'm gonna say the yeah. best part of it that i know what danny goals will yeah. be in the next three years and i can stay on top of that making sure that you know i'm fulfilling his dream as well as and then you're the person that lock unlocks the doors to getting him those okay um yeah you don't come across it to what? Yes. Um, so career visioning, MVV, VP of KW and your team. Um, I'll share with you uh, next month I can bring. We have a um, our mission, vision, values for the Rutherford Group, for our own team. Because yes, KW is our umbrella. However, we are our own organization. And, you know, I love, I know Morgan used to have it when a person would join the market center. Um, she would put, if they're interested in a team, out to all of the teams because Nico, Kane, like everybody's team is a little bit different. Like where does the person end up going? Depends on who they are and their interests. Yet can you clearly define your team's mission, vision, vision, values, beliefs, and perspectives? Uh, here's a big one, time block for talent. If you do not have in your lead generation calendar time to be looking for people, they don't just show up. They don't. 
Okay. Um, so time blocking for talent, typically one day a week, Jared is taking broker metrics, calling through, um, you know, a targeted group of agents to grow the team. I'm obviously doing lead generation for talent, which might be directly calling people, yet also calling great connectors. I mean, you guys gave me some people from title, from mortgage that know people um, because they might know the next team leader, like Andrew from Real Producers. He's not directly, I'm not, I'm not recruiting him, yet he knows a lot of people. Uh, constantly discuss your vision, okay? Um, are you out there talking about what you provide and what you offer? Because that will attract people to you. Eddie's, you do a great job of this on social media, doing the real, here's the new thing I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing. That is constantly putting out there because then you attract people to you. Heather does a great job of that. You do a great job. There's everybody has their own little niches, yet are you constantly out there talking? Um, 15 to 20 active listings. This should be the goal for every single person in this room. When you have 15 to 20 listings, active at any given moment in time, you can build this thing as big as you desire it. You can't really build an organization until you have a lead flow system and listings figured out. It's like putting the cart before the horse. Um, study leadership. Uh, our organization has done uh, John Maxwell's uh, The 21 Year Repeatable Laws of Leadership. We took one a week for the first half of the year. That's an awesome book. Um, Jim Collins, Good to Great. In order to not just be in it for the financial benefit of growing an organization. You have to love people. You have to desire to be a leader. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be raw. And if you're not putting the time into leadership, then you might question your intentions on this. Why am I really doing this? Okay. So studying leadership, uh, we have a leadership academy. Uh, Jeff is working on um, when we have our new uh, team leader in place. We're going to be launching that, okay? Um, why a team growth vertically and horizontally? Uh, leverage. Circle the word leverage. Like we just talked about, when you have a team, you know, one of our agents, Lindsay, she's going to France for two weeks. Her business will keep moving forward. She's going to have fun. Um, that's the benefit. When Jared and I go skiing or do different things, the team has our back. If they've got us um, to support each other. Uh, time expansion. Um, this one, not all of us are entrepreneurs. There's no reason that you have to be the one to build it. If you realize, good Lord, this is a lot of work, then fold into someone that has that entrepreneurial desire. Let them run the play. Okay, stay in the lane that you enjoy the most. Uh, teams provide structure, which actually means when you run the team, you got to be the structure. You have to create it. Um, mentorship, coaching, and training. When you step into a team as the rainmaker, if you're building the team, you should be able to provide mentorship, training, and coaching. Uh, thinking of joining a team, again, it's the same thing that we just talked about. Teams provide leads, teams provide support. Um, Davila said something great. She said, it's not about the splits to me. I like thinking about it this way. Some people were like, no, no, I want that whole entire great. And the people on our team are like, mm -hmm, I want to have a watermelon all day, baby. Because that's the reality. You're going to get up and running fast. You're going to get into production. Um, that's the value proposition that you provide. So, yeah, so that's what I did with the big part for me. And I haven't, I'm going to go through, I want to go through the assistant, assistant first, mm -hmm. no longer with the advice agent. But pretty much, I have all the uh, systems, I would say, that they can just plug in, literally just show the house, and we deal with everything else. We're ready for the next one. You got it. Turn it for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys are similar, yet in 2014, when we got our real estate license, I'm an operations person. I'm a systems person. I like that side of it. I literally took the MREA, and I started at... I think it was the 12 direct, but the, you know, like each one of these, I'm like, well, we don't have that. And I sat down and typed out, this is what it should look like. I had this little black one inch binder with tabs. And as I would um, see something cool, I would print it out and I would shove it in the tab behind open houses or behind listings because I hadn't gotten to creating that system yet. I just literally started in the book. 
at the beginning and worked my way to the end and created systems for every single one of these. Do you realize we have made wrong hire after wrong hire after wrong hire? Like I'm talking to myself here and I will be removed and then come back in. And I'm like, wait, where, I'm sorry, where, where is our um, pre-listing gift for our seller? Like where are the bags? Oh, well, we were, we were saving on money and cost and we're not doing those right now. We just send an email with all the stuff. I'm like, no, it's in here. The pre-listing gift is in the book. We use the book, okay? Because it's, it's tried and true, it's tested. Um, so if you haven't done that, take this book, even though some people are like, oh, it's archaic, it's got the basics. Yes, it can look more digital. Yes, it can be 2022. However, it has the framework from which to build on, okay? And if you don't have the basic framework, then you can't get creative. We often choose to be creative without a framework, okay? Um, thinking of starting a team, again, we, we've talked through most of these throughout our conversation. The financial structure of the team, Gary, in the uh, budget model, he talks about what um, the compensation should look like so that it is a profitable business for you. Um, you guys have been in this class or in different classes with me, I pulled up our P&L, okay? Our profit for our entire company is typically between 35 to 40%. The goal is 40%, sometimes it's 33, 35. Yet if you think last year we did 1.7 million in GCI, we're keeping, even to be conservative, say 35% of that. When you go rogue out of the model, that number is typically gonna shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, okay? Because cost of sale for us is where things can get a little bit out of control. That's, we do a lot of referrals and you go, no, you do a lot of referrals. So think 25% boom right off the top, it's already going, okay? Then you have agent splits. So then when you look at a $10,000 check after all those things, you end up getting three to $4,000. And then we're responsible for running that whole back end of the, the house. It has to be a business worth owning for us, okay? So the financial structure of the team, we can do that in a whole other class, okay? Yet the, the model is already mapped out for us. Ta-da! So it's a little bit, 10 minutes longer, and that's okay. Um, what questions, as I walk through some of this, as you're building it for next steps or hires or this or that, I'm glad Nico finally looked at this. I've said 10 times, I'm like, no, 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 keep part of the money. Like you would have such an opportunity to be the face, hire the leverage. I love it. I'm on the team. No, great class. I mean, there's so much I love it. I haven't revived this in a long time. So it makes sense now that I'm at that level where I'm like, so the other place is where you just want to hire. You know, fun for us, and I don't know about you guys, but your kids and how old they are, you could probably second this. For me on the company that we're building, it gets really excited to think our kids can step in one day and lead some of the different parts. I mean, Jared and I will say, oh, he'd be really good at this or this, or this one would be really good at that. I mean, this is the company. We, we didn't go into dentistry. We're not building a dental practice. We're building something that is, you know, if not more than financial opportunity than that. So, you see a lot of new agents and, and teams and everything. What do you think is the number one reason? What people want to think that people are looking for when they join this team? What is the number one reason? What are the number one reason that people are looking for walking in the door today? I think probably consistent income quickly is a big reason. Um, and then I think the second one is the longer a team is in business, the more people are joining them for like the culture that they represent. Yeah, the real reason like most new agents come in the door and say, put me on a team is because they're like, how am I paying my rent in 90 days? So yet the longer you're around. I think I wrote that with John and me. When we joined that team, it was four and now there's. 32 and I've watched their culture is unbelievable. They have zero turnover. They never lose anybody. And the top agent on their team who, you know, I know very, very well. I mean, she does 125 actions a year on her own. She can more than happily go do it on her own. Mm -hmm. She never do it, never. 
Yeah, because she got not, I mean, she she can't, she came her own admin. She's got their kind of admin staff. I mean, they have a whole another floor in their office and it's all admin staff. But she has her own admin as well and a showing assistant. We should just have a phone and we need to stick function as the score is for she has. I think also the tools and the systems, you know, when I was on my own doing business, I would spend 4,500 a month just, you know, about lead generation, like Zillow lead, by leads, you know, your website, your CRM system, your everything, everything, which, you know, usually teams do provide. Mm -hmm. PC coaching. Yeah, newbies in the door, it's how am I going to beat? And then more sophisticated agents, like when you think about place, you know, Ben Kenny company, or you think about the Kristen Cole network, or you think about these bigger organizations um, who, when they go in, I mean, if you guys don't realize that when someone joins like a place, if their profit was 40%, they're now splitting that equally, the profit with the expansion company or somewhere in that general range, just they're done. I don't want to hire another person. I don't want a 30, 60, 90. I don't want to do the things like, please, somebody take the back end for me, the PPC, the marketing, the campaigns, the mail, I'm going after the. Yeah, what I see when I, you know, especially place, the only one that I know besides, yeah. uh, what's the name of the individual? Uh, Christian Cole Network. The way I see it is for agents, with mega agents, with the big things like all you can get fish. The big thing is that they're like, I'm done. I'm not running the whole thing by myself. So you're going, you're going to your paycheck in half, yeah. but yeah, you also not, you're not engaged anymore. So you're not, you know, but I guess once you get but, to a level, you can but say, I don't think you cut it in half. Yes, you do no, pay fifty right. percent, but what you used to spend for operations mm -hmm. or you know, now you just spend elsewhere. Yeah. Well, here's the reality. So most teams, when they lean into place or they lean into another large organization like that, the first thing that um, place would do is a forensic analysis, like a financial analysis for them, and they're probably at a twenty-ish percent profit margin. Well, with their back-end tools, system support, negotiated deals, all those things, they're not going to feel any difference except they are going to have the back-end support of a company that's been doing this for 20 years. All right. So between riveting and boomtown, which one do you think will, will cause you use boomtown? Not anymore. We used to. We used yeah. to. I used to use Sync. I used to use um, uh, Boomtown. Now, uh, Why Loco? Mm -hmm. And Why Loco is um, they will do some of the conversion for you, right? Why? Oh, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Boomtown would too. Okay. So we used Boomtown a long time ago. We left Boomtown to go to Command and then Command to Brevity. Um, the reason that we didn't go back to Boomtown was when we looked back at our conversion ratios, we were just desiring better or more. Um, I think Boomtown and Brevity are very similar. I mean, the, the lead flows, the follow-up campaigns, the tracking, the hot, nurture, all, all of that is very similar. Uh, Boomtown, our, our average price point here in town, you know, at Boomtown was 1.2. So from lead generation, it's a very high, but but we did target 750 and up. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we chase it and would get 30 to 40 leads a month. So at 1.2 average was a very good store. This is where I'm at, right? So we're in the shifted market. And I think that's the only reason why a lot of agents are gonna be looking for things. Because they don't no one is as busy anymore, even for the company, right? So my mindset is my business. Now that we're going into a shift, I want to double down. Not much marketing dollar, but I'm not putting back expenses for particular things that are working marketing-wise. And I do want to implement some of that new, you know, coherent or intense theory. I love my demand, don't get me wrong. But I'm definitely I'm lacking some of that, you know, lead flow, more, more you know, hands-on type of you know what it is? It's, it's your database and it's not just a lead flow. It's, you know, for me, you know, I, for me personally, why it works, you know? So I used to go to networking events all the time. Like all the time, you know, every, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, I would be a different, you know, same consistently same event all the time. You meet same people, you exchange your cards. How have you been since last time we saw you? You know, you chit chat and everything. 
you do one on one. When you do one on one, it's great because maybe hopefully they're gonna refer something, right? But the second I started putting every single one, every single card to, you know, at the time I was doing Boom Town and doing, you know, sending, you know, twice a month home to Naples, mm -hmm. just a link where they can actually change their criteria and now start looking and then you can follow them, you know, and then sending the market update once a month and then sending the, the newsletter once a month. When I started doing that, I noticed I go to the same events people that I know I again exchanged you know the, that 15th card you know with them but now they started oh my god you're hustling you're doing yeah. so well and they're all like I mean I've been hustling yep I've been doing... not a slacker last month yes. I promise but but they started seeing you as yep. way more active way more productive way more you know like they they just started seeing you more often with you know five minutes of my work copy pasting market update from Nable. Literally copy pasting and sending to ten thousand people. Yeah. Gary Keller said that at Mega Camp and it made me really think he said in a shifting market, I need you to identify the sources that give you the greatest return on your business. And I want you to stop going to Starbucks and take that five dollars a day at Starbucks and put that money every single month into that lead source. He's like, you've got to re-margin the, the fluff, the extra money you are spending and just put more money into um, the things that are working for you. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a call on every check. I, I reallocate that into different accounts, mm -hmm. um, property being one of them into my regular personal. So I have those two in order to leave more money on the, on the operating accounts to be able to have more. All right, so you guys help me because I've never done this one before, yet my passion is building teams. I mean, for Jared and I, this has kind of changed the whole trajectory for us. The people in our organization um, have been with us. They haven't left us, but we, we love our people. Um, my passion is helping the agents in our office create the same thing. So moving forward, what can I add? Please adjust, can we can dive deeper into the topics yet for this being the like first introductory one what could we tweak change do i'm going to do I think what in that class for the uh budget model okay that would be great okay no but this was wonderful oh it's great it's more of the people in the room too so we yeah the ground getting the right people because the more conversation we have about people that are in the same mindset same problems yeah. situations we learn from each other more too so you being a facilitator like you're you know, not always having to be the one that brings the information, how we can learn from each other, share the music like I'm just ready now, I'm doing different things, but being in this type of room, we don't do that even But so we have to make sure that we do show up for the mastermind. Because if we do that and then nobody, you know, like that's good. Doesn't you know, yeah, but then, so maybe even um, like if it's an hour or 40 minutes of content, 20 mastermind or 30, 30 or something like that. I would say we can touch on every model in the red book. That would be great, like a class. Once a month. Yeah. Like be, uh, next month work chart, next month budget model. Yeah. Okay. Was, Nico, for the lead generation program, like whether Brevity or, or Boomtown or whatever, look for the lender. Or the oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, because you say like it's a bigger expense. It's really not if you partner up with a couple different, you know, businesses there. Yeah. We get it, I think about five thousand dollars a month between two different lenders and they pay for that ad spend. Mm -hmm. And then events and things like that. Because once you pay for you have your monthly payments and then on top of it you you gave them a budget for for the uh, PPC mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me I could be okay, so yeah. off yet I mean brevity itself is about a thousand maybe. Then the ads on top of it that we spend for us is a, a few thousand and then we take some of that money and it goes into like they did football magnets. The football magnets for the pro season and college, um, they're going out right now. So like some of that money that they give us also goes on that. We just put their little logo on it. It's all different. But but you're looking at you know the, the system that's say a thousand dollars and then about the ten dollars a lead. Yeah. So depending on how much how many leads you want. Yet I will tell you that if you are just getting rolling in this, it was not until um, the team functionality, which of course rolled out right after we jumped ship. So the team functionality in command, um, 
from when we left, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, um, is leaps and bounds from when we left. Um, I would implore you to explore, lean in, have, um, there is a enablement, there's a whole entire division of Keller Williams. They will get on with you, look at command, do demos, do all of that, just like Rivity or who found the do. Um, that can save you a lot of money. Uh, command, the CRM that we have. Oh, okay. I'm actually using it. Yeah, we used it for years. Yeah, I use it now. I, I like it. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. What great honor. Yeah. All right. We'll plan to keep this rolling once a month.